Hello and welcome to today's workshop. Today we're going to talk about how to customize the D2L homepage. So we'll do this by changing the layout and creating some custom widgets and even modifying the colors. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. What you'll need is you'll need to be in your course as an instructor, as we are here, and this is the um, sample course we've been using for each of these workshops. And just a little bit about the course homepage. Right, this is the first page that your students see when they log into your course. Um, and it's made up of widgets. Each of these little boxes is technically a widget. Um, we can assign these widgets to have different colors for the banners or the headings for each widget. And then we can also um, choose whether we want a one, two, or three column layout for the home page. So how you lay out your course home page really will impact um, how your student's eye is guided toward um, different elements that are on that page. So you want to be sure that um, your home page is not confusing for your students, it's clear, and that it's attractive. So um, let's go ahead and get started with um, looking at how the, the home page is laid out. And as you can see in this example here, um, and it'll be a little more clear in a moment, but for example here we have an instructor-only widget across the top. And this is using an area in D2L called the header. So if you think about it like um, a document that you might be creating in Microsoft Word or, or some other program, a header will stretch across the entire course homepage. And you can see that that's what's happening with this widget that contains these various links. Notice also that these widgets can be um, collapsed or expanded by clicking this double chevron icon here in the corner. Right? So by collapsing that widget, it makes the home page a little more easier, a little more easy to read. Uh, there's a little less going on. But you can see that that widget spans the entire um, width of the home page. Whereas the news widget here is uh, in the left column, and this content outline widget is in the right column. Okay, so I wanted to point that out because now when we go into edit mode, you'll see where these columns exist and how we can change them. So for now, we'll go to um, edit the course homepage, and we get there by using the edit course link here. So I'll select edit course, and we have uh, several options we're presented with. The one we'll use is home pages. It's the third one down on the right hand side. So click home pages, and D2L allows you to have multiple home pages for a course. Only one can be active at a time but you could have different versions of a home page. So for instance, if you had content that you wanted to display in your home page layout, perhaps for the first week or two of a course while students are adding and dropping, um, you could have a, a layout for that. And then once that period's over, you could have a different layout that becomes active, uh, maybe without some of the additional information students need to register for a class, for example. Um, so each course is created with a default home page uh, there's a course default, which is really very um, minimalistic, but then um, there's an SCC default homepage. And in this case, uh, the version we're working with right now is the SCC version 9.4 homepage. And you can see here that D2L indicates that um, down here it's currently active. It also indicates up here under the active homepage that this is the homepage that's currently active. Now quickly, just to show you how you can change your active home page, uh, let's activate the course default and see what that looks like. You'll recall just a moment ago we saw our course home page looks like this. Now let's change it to the, the basic default. We'll do that by clicking this set button that's here under active. We're asked to confirm that choice. And we'll do that. We can always switch back to the other home page, so there's no harm. And now you'll see that the course default home page is active in this area here. Now when we click on course home, our home page will look a lot different. You can see that some of the same content is here, not all, but the news items are still here, um, the updates are still here, and the calendar is still here. We've lost a few widgets, and the layout has changed to a three column wide layout with the middle column taking up the most uh, space. Let's go ahead and go back and we'll change back to the um, SCC branded homepage. 
Again, edit course, home pages, presented with a list of our home pages, and we'll go back to setting um, the SCC 9.4 home page as active. Confirm our choice. That's now active. We could go back to course home, or if you'd like, there are some icons. They're a little bit hard to see here, um, but there's a preview icon, which is this one in the middle. It looks like a sheet of paper with a magnifying glass. So you can always preview without having to leave this page um, what that homepage layout will look like. Oops, that one sort of uh, disappeared on me. And it's previewing in a smaller window here, so if we stretch it out, um, well, it should fill it, but it's not. All right, this is also a good way where you can test um, on different screen resolutions. So if you know, for example, that your students will be using, uh, you know, 800 by 600 would be pretty small anymore, but that they might be using a particular screen resolution, you can preview that here to see what that will look like. Obviously, the higher the resolution, uh, the larger everything is. So we'll close that preview window. Now, if we want to edit the active home page, what we do is we simply click up here. We click on the name of that home page, and you'll see in that pop-up text, again, it's probably hard to read, but it said edit um, SCC v9.4 home page. So we will click here to edit. This is where the fun begins. So for each home page, you have a properties tab, which is where we are now, um, and it gives you some properties such as the name. You can rename this if you wanted to. Um, I'm not going to do that now. You can also um, put in a description. This is really helpful if you're using multiple versions of a home page or if you have a heavily customized home page um, and you want to indicate that. Sort of like putting notes in for yourself later. Um, and then the, the tab we're going to spend the most time on, though, is where it says Content and Layout. So I'll click that. And this really shows us a mock-up of the home page, just in a layout sort of, sort of mode. So a couple of things I would point out to you first. Um, Number one is you do have some options right here, panel sizes and preview the home page. So for example, to preview the home page as it exists now, again, we click that box and we have once again a preview of our, our home page. And it's fully functional. You can test out uh, different components of that. Excuse me. This other option here is called panel sizes. And what this does is you can see below we have a left panel in, in the body of our page, a center panel, and then a right panel. The header spans across the top. So again, you can see this is where those um, instructor-only links are living in that header. There's also a footer that spans the bottom of the page. But the bulk of what you'll be controlling is what's in this middle portion, which is made up of the left, center, and right-hand panels. Now you'll notice in the current example we're using, the right-hand panel is empty. That's intentional because we wanted to have a two-column layout. We'll preview that again here. Uh, a two-column layout um, rather than three because the three columns can get pretty busy. There's a lot of information happening there. So that's the general layout of a home page. What we need to look at now are the panel sizes because this is how you can control, for example, here the left panel is slightly larger than the center panel which is larger than the right panel. We'll click Panel Sizes, and this dialog opens. Let's make it a little bigger here so we can see the whole thing. And it asks you to change the width of the panels using um, the, the widths down here. So you have left, center, and right panel, and the total must equal 100%. That's the trick here. So you can see, for example, that the left panel width is 55%, the center panel is 44%, and the right panel is 1%. So it must equal 100%, and unfortunately, no panel can equal zero, right? Uh, because we would have made the right panel just a zero to get rid of it, but the smallest it can be is one. And at 1%, with nothing in it, it's invisible anyway. So that's how you can, can change the um, size of these. Just for fun, let's switch these around. 
And uh, let's do a little bit different. Let's do 60% for the left panel. We'll do 39% for the center and then 1% for the right. The other option you have here that I would point out is the option to force these widths. And what that means is, let's say, for example, I put a widget in the center panel that it would take up more than 39% of the width. By default, D2L will automatically compensate for that, and it'll stretch that center panel to match the width of that widget. If I don't want D2L to automatically stretch any of these panels, then I would check the box to force those widths, and then what I would get would be a scroll bar, probably a horizontal scroll bar, in that center panel if the widget was too large for that panel. I'm going to leave that deactivated for now, but let's just see what happens when we switch these panels around. So we have 60 for the left and 39 for the center. We'll click Save. And now our layout has changed to indicate um, the, the changes that we made there. Let's go ahead and preview the home page and see what that looks like. Okay. And as you can see, now the, the news is more prominent. Um, the content outline is a little slimmer. Um, and the calendar is over here as well. And there's nothing on the right-hand side. That's how you can modify um, the width of your home page panels. Now, for example, if we wanted just a single panel, we could definitely make, um, you know, for example, the left panel be 98%, the center and the right be 1%, and the impact would be one large um, left panel that spanned basically the entire page. Okay, so that's how you modify the, the layout. How do you add widgets? And what else can you control um, in terms of the home page? Well, first of all, um, you can work in any of these panels here and add widgets to them. And D2L comes with a set of system widgets that are um, pretty useful. For example, news, content browser, calendar, and role switch are all system widgets. The all instructor links header that we put on here is a custom widget um, that we embedded in your course. And as an instructor, you can create any custom widget you want. A widget really is just a box that you can put something in. And we'll see how to do that here in just a moment. If you want to add an existing widget, um, there are a couple of things you, can, you need to know about. Number one, widgets are added to the home page, right? They're not created from home pages. So for example, uh, let's add something to the, right pan the center panel here. Um, and we'll click Add Widget. D2L now, now presents us with a list of widgets um, in its repository. So, um, for example, there's an Access Google Apps widget, um, All Instructor Links, Auditors, Bookmarks. Let's add Bookmarks. And then let's find another one here. Just scroll down. How about we add a um, picture library widget? So check those boxes and click Save. When I do that, the widgets load onto the home page. And I can again preview the home page. Now when I scroll, I see bookmarks and a, a picture library widget. Now let's say I decide I don't want that picture library widget there after all. I want to move it. I can click this triangle icon, and I'm presented with options to customize it, um, edit the display options, or move it. So let's move it to the center panel. I'll click Move to. And then just, or I'm sorry, the center is really the left. Excuse me. And then I just say where I want it to go. So I want it to go into the left panel. And now the picture library is moved to the left panel. Maybe I want to move bookmarks to somewhere else, so we'll click Move To. Let's say I want to put it in the header, just for fun. Okay, That's how you move widgets around in the home page layout. I'm actually going to move bookmarks back to that um, center panel. And I really want to get rid of the picture library, so I'm going to click here, and I'm going to click Remove from Home Page. Again, I'm asked if I really want to do this to confirm, so I'll say yes. Now I have um, the widgets that I want on my home page. 
Now, you can also move them within a column. So for example, if I want the calendar to be on the bottom of this column, I just say move down, and it moves that way as well. So that's how we can add widgets to the home page. Let's go back to the home page for just a moment. And you'll see that each of these widgets um, has some certain characteristics. For example, they all have the colored uh, banner here. Um, and they all have this icon here that allows me, um, just by clicking on it, to customize that widget. So let's customize one. We'll click on this little, it's a computer screen with a, uh, we'll click a check mark or a paintbrush next to it. So we'll click to customize. And you have these options for every widget in D2O. You can go with um, the, the default, se the settings that are custom for this particular course or the default. Uh, those are, you probably want to leave those alone. You can choose whether or not you want a widget to have a border. So let's take off the border just for now. Um, you can also decide whether you want the title bar. So for example, the title bar. Um, is where it says, for instance, browse the content outline, or news, or role switch, for example. You can change the colors of those. And you can actually, uh, in some cases, customize um, the title. So instead of news, if you wanted to say course announcements, or updates, something like that. You can change the color of um, that text as well, whether it's centered, left, or right justified. And finally, this is an important control also. You can prohibit your students from minimizing a widget. So let's go ahead and do that for news. That means they can't click on this little double chevron to shrink it down. Um, I'll go ahead and say, click Save. And now you'll notice that um, our news widget says course announcements and updates instead of news. And look, the, uh, this icon to, to collapse exists on my other widgets, but not on this one. So if I really want them to be able to see something and they can't, um, can't hide it from themselves, um, that's an option you have there as well. Let's now get into um, how to create a custom widget. And we have a couple of examples that we'll use in this course. We're going to go back to Edit Course. Now, instead of going to Home Pages, we're going to go to Widgets, because we're actually going to create some widgets that we can then put on our home page. So I'll click Widgets here. And now there's a slew of, um, of widgets in here. Um, some are customized here. Um, any widget that has this icon, the bracket with the globe and then the bracket, those are all custom widgets. You can see by up here on the top, you can click the tab to see all the system widgets again. We're actually going to create a new widget here. So I'll say New Widget. And in this case, I want to create a course banner. So what I'll do is I will type the word banner in here. Oops, I have to click in there. All right, it's a good idea to put the name of the course just because it helps you keep your widgets straight later on. I probably don't need a description, but I'll go ahead and put in Course Banner. And now I'm going to click Save. Now the way that this works is I can actually, um, once I've saved it, I can customize, which is again that same, um, same settings that we saw before that we shortcutted from, from the course homepage. Um, you know, do I want to show a border? In this case, I'm going to say no border on, on that as well. Um, what color do I want the title bar to be, um, et cetera, et cetera. I'll leave those alone. I'll actually save since I changed the border. Um, you can set release conditions, which I'm not going to cover today, but these can be conditional release of that widget. And then content is where the fun really happens. So we'll click content. So I told you a few minutes ago, a widget is basically a box you can put anything into, right? So a widget could, a widget could just consist of text. Be sure to complete the following worksheet. 
before the end of the drop period, right? Maybe you have students complete a survey or something like that. Anything that you can enter using the text editor here can go in a widget. That includes things like images, quick links, um, text, and you can actually um, click over to the advanced editor here, which gives you some more options. Um, oh, that's a little uh, funny shape there. Um, so you have lots of options. You can add videos. You can add all kinds of things to a widget. In this case, we're going to add an image. I don't want any text, so I'm going to click Image. I'm going to browse to a file that I have on my computer here. We'll pull in the um, course banner template. Now, anytime you add an image, D2L prompts you for accessibility to add alternative text. In this case, it is a decorative image, so I don't have to add text. I can just cl click that this is a decorative image. Say OK. And oops, I tried to add something that was a PowerPoint file, not an image file. OK. So we'll um, do that. And one, one of the things I want to call your attention to is on the um, Distance Ed website. Let me pull that up here. Oops, D -E. SacCity-online.org slash DE. Under the For Faculty link, go to Assistance with D2L, and we have some sample widgets here that you can choose from. So again, For Faculty, Assistance with D2L, sample widgets or widget samples and we actually provide a couple of things that you can try out yourself there's a um, course banner template which we're going to do here there's also an instructor contact widget and um, a link to a, a place where you can create custom twitter widgets for your d2l site what we're going to do is download the um, horizontal banner template it's actually a powerpoint file so i'm going to go ahead and open it and let's quickly create a course banner then we'll paste this into um, the widget that we've just created. So I've just opened PowerPoint on my machine. And this is a custom-sized um, slide that you can come in. It's, it's editable. I can change the placeholder and say D2, D2L 101. online workshops at SCC, for example, right? I can type the text in. I could go, you know, I don't really like that font, so I'm just in PowerPoint. I can do anything in here that I could do uh, anywhere else in PowerPoint. Put, uh, that's even worse. <laughs> I'll do that. Um, but you can make whatever changes you want. This image could be changed for a different image, for example. Um, you know, you can make all kinds of um, different things that you can do here um, with your images in PowerPoint. Um, I think I'll go with that one. When you're done, what you do is you um, go to the file menu and you click Save As. And then we're going to go to Other Formats. And we're going to save this instead of as a PowerPoint presentation. We're going to save it as uh, JPEG format here. So depending on which version of PowerPoint you have, it might look different. rename it to call it D2O 101 banner, click save. Do you want to export every slide or the current slide? Um, there's only one slide, so it doesn't matter which choice you say. I'll just say current slide only. And now it's saved this banner as a JPEG file. I can go ahead and close out. Don't need to save it. So this is something you can try on your own. Um, and now we'll go back to D2L. Right. So here we are back in our edit widget. We're still here. We, um, we're going to add an image file. I'll browse to the computer again. And now I'll go to uh, that file that we just saved called D2L 101 Banner. Click Upload. 
Again, this is the decorative image. Say OK. And now I have a banner. I probably want to center it if I'm going to have it um, go in the header. So I'll just click to center it and click Save. Now let's preview this widget that we've just created. I can use this preview widget um, icon, which is handy right up here above the text editor. Preview. And here it is. Right. Now you'll notice um, that in this widget, it's actually still showing the word banner, D2L 101. I don't really want to do that. So let's go back to the Customize tab here. We can set those um, options. And now we'll un uncheck Show the Title Bar. I really only want to show what's in the box. I don't want to show the box itself. So I've turned off the border. I've turned off the title bar. I click Save. Now when I preview the widget, now we have just the widget. Right. Let's go ahead and add this widget to our home page. We've just created it. We've saved it. Um, we'll go back to Edit Course. We'll go to Home Pages. We're going to edit our current home page. We want to change the content layout. Now here we are. Let's put it up above the Instructor Links header. Because remember, this only shows for instructors. Um, so we can put the course banner above that. So what we'll do is within the header here, we'll select Add Widget. Now we'll scroll to find the um, widget we just created. Here it is, Banner D2L 101. Again, we could preview it from here if we wanted to using this icon. We'll just check the box to add it and then click Save. And now the banner's been added. You'll notice, though, it's still below the instructor links. I'd like to move that up, so we'll click this triangle and we'll move it up. And now we'll go to the course homepage to see what it looks like. And here we go. Now we have a course banner um, with our instructor links below it and the rest of the course here. Now, if you want to see what this looks like as a student, you can always use the roll switch widget that comes on your home page. It's standard. So right now, here I'm seeing it as instructor. I'll change to student. So I'll select student and cl click change role. Actually, it looks pretty much the same because uh, this widget is set to still show for us. So uh, that didn't do qu quite what I wanted it to do, but uh, we'll go back to instructor role anyway so we have all the right permissions. So we were able to add a course banner. Now you'll notice that there, um, if you go back to the um, Distance Ed Cove website um, and the, the widget samples, there's also a horizontal, I'm sorry, a vertical banner template. So if you wanted to do a vertical banner, you could create one that way as well. And actually, this is a little bit better use of space uh, because it doesn't push all the content down so far on the screen. We'll go ahead and we'll do Save As again. We'll save this as a JPEG file. Click Save. And now if we go um, back to where we were in D2L, we'll go back to Edit Course. And now let's make another widget. So we'll click Widgets, New Widget. We'll call it Banner Vertical D2101. Save it. We'll customize it because, again, I'm still not going to want the border. I'm not going to want the title bar. We'll save those changes. Come back to Content over here. Click to add an image. Browse to that file on our computer. It's a decorative image, so we'll select that option. Click OK. And now in this case, we don't want to center it, probably, because um, this is just going to be um, part of a widget that's squeezed into one of those columns. So we'll click Save. Then we'll go back to the Home Pages. So we'll do Edit Course, Home Pages. 
edit our current home page here. Go to content and layout. I'm going to remove the um, other widget we had with the big banner on it. I can always put it back so it's not scary to take it off. And now this time I'm going to um, add that widget to the, the column that appears on the right. So here's the vertical banner. We'll select that, click Save. Um, and I'm going to move it up a little bit. Move it up a couple times. All right. And now when we go back to the course homepage, now we have a nice little banner here. Now you can tell if this would probably work better if I had like a three column layout and I put this in a really thin um, column or something like that. Anyway, now you know how to add a banner and you know how to get to the link on the Distance Ed website where you can access that PowerPoint um, template that can be easily edited and saved. There are some other things we can add to our home page as well. Um, and let's go back to the Distance Ed site for just a moment. So if we look at these samples wid sample widgets, there's also an Instructor Contact Me widget. So for example, Let's click on this, and it's going to open in Adobe Acrobat Reader. It takes just a second to open. What this is is an interactive form that, uh, once it opens here, <laughs> will allow us to type um, our contact information into some, into some fields. Here we go. And so it gives you some basic instructions. So you can type in your um, information here. So we'll have an office location, a phone number office hours, and a website if you have it. Okay, we'll put that in there. Once you've entered the information you want, simply click on this button that says Process HTML Code. Watch what happens to what's down below here. Now we're given a note to copy this text in this field and paste it into a new widget. So simple. simply highlight all of this, select Copy by either doing a right click. I can go to Edit, Copy, or Control C, either one. We'll copy. Now we'll come back over to D2L. We'll go to Edit Course, Widgets, we'll make a new widget, um, and actually I like to give this a title that is useful to the students, something like How to Contact Your Instructor, click Save. We'll leave all the um, customization settings alone for this one, but we can click on content now. Now here's, here's something that we need to know. Anytime, for example, in this form we were copying from um, HTML code, right? So you can see it has these little brackets in it and it looks you know, like, like code rather than just text. So anytime we're copying code, and this could be like a YouTube embed code, it could be a Twitter widget code, it could be this code. Anytime you're doing code, you want to enter it not into this screen here with where you have all these editing options, because this is actually the, the visual or the WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get, editor. You want to toggle, coming down here to the bottom, to this button that says Edit HTML Source. So just remember, it's this first little icon on the left here at the bottom. Click that, you then get an HTML source editor, and now we can paste that widget code in here. Again, this could be from any website that allows you to embed something into another page. So we'll select Paste. Here's that text that, uh, that came from the 
um, the Acrobat form. Now I'll click Update. If I click Save, um, that should have pasted in here. Why am I not seeing it? Let's try that again. I'll toggle back into HTML source mode. Paste. I'm actually going to take this first line out here. Update. There we go. And now you can see, um, just by entering those fields, now I have a customized widget here. I can still edit the text in text mode. That's not a problem. Just like D201 course. Click Save. Preview the widget here. That's a pretty uh, handy little um, instructor contact widget. Now, if I want to go one um, step a little bit further than that, once I've pasted that code in and now everything I want is showing up here in the um, WYSIWYG editor, I could also add, for example, um, Oops, a picture, right? So let's add a picture of myself here. I'll browse to that on my computer. There's my instructor photo. It's decorative again. Okay, so now I have a photo of myself. Um, Something here didn't work out. I guess I filled out the form incorrectly. I can go ahead and make corrections here. Oops. All right, I can do any kind of formatting stuff here that, that I wanted to do. Click Save. Now we'll go back over to um, Edit Course. And we'll put this on the home page. So we'll click on home pages, edit the current home page, go to content and layout. And now I'll add a widget. I believe we called it how to contact your instructor. Here it is. If I wasn't sure, I could always preview it using this icon here. There it is. Check the box, click save. That's added, and then I want to move it up a little bit. Okay, and now let's go back to Course Home and see what this looks like. All right, so now we have D201, we have how to contact your instructor, etc. Now, just for kicks, you know, I think it would make sense to put this banner in with this information, and then it's all kind of course info. So let's go back to Edit Course, and we'll do this in the Widgets area again. We'll click Widgets. We'll go to, um, oh, this is a custom widget, right? So I have to click here to get to custom widgets and search for how to contact your instructor. Here it is. If I want to edit this widget, click this pencil icon here to edit. I could change this if I wanted to, to say something like, about the course and instructor. I change it about this course and instructor. Click Save. Now we'll come back over to Content. I like what I have here. I like all the text. I like the links and everything. But what I'm going to do is actually, since this is a visual editor, I'll come back over in front of the picture of myself, um, which is actually not me. <laughs> Uh, and I'll click on the insert an image again, browse to an image on my computer. And in this case, I'm going to put that vertical banner um, back in. It's a decorative image, so I'll select that choice. Uh, I guess since I've already uploaded it, it's asked me if I want to overwrite. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that. And now I can stretch this out. By the way, you can change the size of your text editor by grabbing this little corner that has the little dots on it. It's a handle that you can actually uh, make it a lot bigger. And now I can grab onto this image and maybe shrink it down a little bit. And uh, Maybe I want to move these around. Maybe I want to uh, maybe flip them, do something like that. I could make my image a little bit bigger, maybe. 
Uh, these are obviously a little bit out of balance. Oh, too small. I don't like that. Uh, let's go back. We'll click Save. Now, remember, I already have this widget on my home page. So even though I've changed the name, uh, let's go back to the home page and see what it looks like. So we'll select Course Home. And look, now I have About This Course and Instructor. I still have this one, which I like the size of the banner, but it's just not really working with my layout. So I'm going to go back to Edit Course, Home Pages, Edit the Current Home Page, Content and Layout. It is a lot of clicks to get in here. Um, and then the banner, the, the, just the banner by itself, I want to remove. So I'll click this little icon here, say Remove from Home Page. Yes, if I'm sure. And yes, I do. I'm just removing it from the layout. I'm not deleting the widget. We'll say yes. Now when we go back to Course Home, that's much better. So there are a lot of ways that you can edit um, your home page and, and create custom widgets. Once again, um, use the sample widgets on the Distance Ed website. That's at um, saccity-online.org. Slash DE. See if we can pull that back up for us here. Go to For Faculty, Assistance with D2L, and Widget Samples here. Thanks for uh, paying attention today and, and learning how to customize your homepage. If you have questions, do come by and uh, see us during one of our open lab times or contact us uh, here at the Distance Education Department at Sacramento City College. All of our contact information is located here on the website. You can get to that through the Contact Us link, and we'd be happy to work with you. Thanks so much. I hope this tutorial was helpful.